the Michigan spring practice. Uh, we'll get going here in about five days. March 18th is when they'll get rocking and rolling. And, and now we are finally starting to uh, finalize the coaching staff for Sharon Moore in his first year as the permanent head coach. Tom, Mike Hart, running backs coach. It's not going to be a part of the staff for the Wolverines. Big deal, no deal, medium deal. What's the what's what's the thought here? Medium deal. Okay. Um, I think that I mean Mike Hart, obviously a former Wolverine, been on that staff for a while. Was wasn't good at running backs coach for him. Was a good recruiter for them. Losing them, losing him is not you know going to make you happy. But Mike Hart, I don't think he's irreplaceable either. Like I think you could find another running backs coach who maybe doesn't have the same emotional connection to the program. He'd still be okay. So I think it's a medium deal. I don't know if it's going to really shake anything up too much same i i think they would rather have kept him if he was cool in the role that he had that but, was something i didn't want to speak out of turn here but there wasn't there like a wasn't there my friction well wasn't there some mike hart wants more for mike hart amidst all this turnover and that there one mike of hart wants to be the next coach that is, yeah, that is right. my understanding. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so when Sharon Moore is named the next head coach, now we've created some friction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're still going to be the running backs coach and yeah. there's no kind of promotion in it. I mean, and he's been a guy that's been mentioned before this season as potentially the next coach. He played there. I'm sure there's some egos involved here. I think this is kind of normal. I don't I don't look at it as some red flag. I think it's just Correct. normal that you would see somebody be like, wait a second. I, I thought I was gonna be the guy and I'm not getting any bump. Like I, I don't think it's the, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. What about his recruiting, bud? I mean, it, or do you look at him as one of the what it on Sharon Moore's staff as it stands right now? Is does the recruiting apparatus take a big hit with the loss of heart or has more in his time since joining that staff been able to have enough wins and drive enough recruiting success himself that you're not going to, you're not going to think that more was going to be leaning on heart in such a way that that's going to take a step back. Chip, I think it's more the latter. Like I don't really think that they were depending on Mike Hart to carry this staff recruiting. I, I actually think there is some chance that Michigan's recruiting improves under Sharon Moore. Uh, just because I don't think Sharon Moore is going to be rumored to be taking an NFL job every offseason, like <laughs> after Sonic. I, I mean, I, I do think that that sort of impacted Michigan a little bit in recruiting. I, I don't think it was an enormous deal. It wasn't a deal breaker for most kids. But you can't tell me on the margins that the question of like, hey, this head coach tries to leave for the NFL every single offseason, very clearly, uh, didn't have some impact on the elite players who have a lot of options. Uh, so... No, I, I don't think the Mike Hart thing is, is going to to hurt their recruiting too much. Do y'all know who the reports are indicating uh, is being targeted for Michigan staff? Uh, it's a school in the Midwest, so I got to assume Tony Alford's name has popped up. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Notre mm. Dame, Michigan, Ohio State. It's just, you know, there's like that whole triangle. Yeah, they're just all uh, jumping around because um, Tony Alford's on the staff right now at Ohio State, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. yeah, that'd be something. That would be something. Sharon Moore going to get Tony Alford from Ohio State. Again, those are just reports literally this morning. Uh, we'll see if there's any any movement on that here in the next 24 hours or so before we're back with you on Thursday. And on Thursdays, we like to dive into the big old bag of mail. We don't always have time for all of the excellent questions that get in there. That doesn't mean that we forget them. So when it is appropriate, like when we're talking about Michigan football, we like to throw them in. Uh, so this question comes from Seth. Best college football pod out there. Been listening since the 24-7 days. I am a huge Michigan fan, and I am on cloud nine right now. However, looking ahead to 2024, I see three to four losses easy. What is going to happen at quarterback? We have Alex Orgy, Jaden Denegal, Jaden Davis. Uh, he did not include Jack Tuttle. Uh, he said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess he didn't know about the seventh year of eligibility that was going to be granted to Jack Tuttle. He said, I'm worried about the offense thoughts. So uh, Mikey has put together a nice little breakdown for us that we can look at. So yes, Jack Tuttle, year seven. He was in the same 
recruiting class is Trevor Lawrence and Michael Penix. And here he is battling for the starting quarterback job in the 2024 season. He, of course, came from Indiana. Alex Orgy, we got to see him a good bit last season, a little bit more of a you know, specialized package that they had for him in the ground game. He will have an opportunity to show that he is more than just a Wildcat quarterback. Uh, Jane Dengal, no real significant body of work there. You see just five pass attempts in the whole season. And then the true freshman, Jaden Davis. He arrives, a, a blue chip player coming out of high school uh, who will, you know, represent what could be a high future for them. Uh, whether they need him in 2024, that's yet to be seen, especially with some other experience there. Uh, but I'll, I'll throw it to you first here, especially with your your knowledge of Davis and, and some, of the, some of the prospects behind these guys. How do you think it's going to end up playing out for Michigan's offense? Yeah, so I, I kind of am curious, like, what are Michigan's goals for this season, right? It, or do they feel like they have a team that can compete for the national title? or just a team that can compete to win the Big Ten, or maybe like, hey, like internally we feel like making the playoff would be a good goal. And my guess is probably somewhere in the middle. Like they definitely probably still feel like they can win the Big Ten with this team. But you need to kind of craft your offense for with two goals. One, long-term, what does Sharon Moore want to run independent of Harbaugh? Now, I think they were running a lot of Sharon stuff, but there's certainly a hell of a lot of Harbaugh influence in what they ran. Number two, as a first-time head coach, it is pretty important that you get off on the right foot and you play to your strengths. The strengths of this team will be this defense because this defense is going to be absolutely nasty again. You still have Kenneth Grant. You still have uh, uh, Mason, Mason Grant. Grant. Josiah Stewart came back. You got you got uh, Jay Sean coming over from Maryland at, at linebacker. A lot of your secondary is back. I mean, Rod Moore's back. Will Johnson's back. So the what, who's not back is Ladarius Henderson, Trevor Keegan, Drake Nugent, Zach Zinter and Carson Bar or Carson Barhart. That's like your whole offensive line. Uh, my guess here is they're going to need more help in the run game than they had. And thus, I think doing like adding a plus one runner at quarterback makes a lot of sense because they also lost a decent bit of their playmakers at receiver who looked pretty damn good at the combine, by the way. So the, we may be underrating the quality of the losses that they had there at the receiver position. So I would think I would guess that it's going to be Orgy or maybe Denegal. Uh, their OC said that Denegal was the most improved player uh, on offense last year. I got that from the Brandon Marcello piece that he put out on the uh, big burning questions for the Big Ten this spring. But, man, they put Orgy in games and trusted him to run around. He only attempted one pass, I believe. So how sort of uh, grounded pound will this Michigan offense look? I think potentially like very grounded pound with a lot of QB run game is what I'm anticipating. Uh, I, like them in South Carolina feel very similar to me in, in how I think approach wise, they could look this year with some of the QB run game stuff. Um, if Jaden Davis is able to make a jump and take over that offense, that would be very surprising to me as a true freshman with all of the new pieces there as well. But like, I think Michigan, man, if you just have some kind of like really good, run game with the QB and you play defense like that, they could win 10 games. So that's kind of what I think they'll probably do. Uh, going back to Jack Tuttle, Chip, you mentioned that he was in the same recruiting class as like Trevor Lawrence and Michael Penix. We didn't talk about it on Monday, but I found this hilarious. You know, Drew Pine has transferred to Missouri. He left, <laughs> yes. Notre, he left Notre Dame and went to Arizona State. Now he's at Missouri. And I was shocked to find out that Drew Pine still has three years of eligibility left because Drew Pine is seven months younger than Michael Penix, and he could still play another three seasons. As for Michigan, I think that there are three options to be starting next year. I think it's Alex Orgy, Jaden Denegal, or an unnamed transfer that hasn't shown up on campus yet and might come in and the portal after the spring, depending on what Bud was touching on, what Michigan's ultimate goal is in 2024. If they want to make a run at a national title again and defend it, I don't think I don't think they have the QB on their roster to do that right now. But I do think when you look at this offense, like, Jim Harbaugh was there. We know how Jim Harbaugh is. Sharon Moore is the offensive coordinator. Sharon Moore is an offensive line coach. When you watch Michigan's offense last year, <laughs> the run game was far more complicated than the passing game. 
Like they did more as far as formations and shifts when they were running the ball than when they were passing. Like you might get a guy go in motion on a pass. You might not, probably not. But in the run game, oh my God, everybody's shifting all around. They're changing around. They're they're getting guys, yeah, whatever. So I think you're probably going to see more of that because I think Sharon Moore just really likes running the ball. I think there's a reason Jim Harbaugh promoted him to be offensive coordinator. And there is the question marks of the offensive line. So I do think there's a chance Alex Orgy is the starter because of what he brings. But I don't know if he threw a pass last year. And that's one of the things because you know that they trust him because they used him in the biggest games. He They brought him in against Ohio State. They brought him in against Alabama. They brought him in against Washington. He didn't throw a pass in any of those games. So it's like they clearly like him, but what is he as a passer? Because if he's in there and he can't throw, then your offense becomes a lot easier to defend if the defense doesn't give a damn about you possibly throwing the ball. As for Jaden Denegal, you touched on it, bud. Kurt Campbell talked about how improved he was. He's he's huge. He's like 6'5". Yeah. He's, He's a big boy, but he's not exactly the most mobile guy, but they do say he's very accurate. So you could see him, and if they want to just go kind of pro-stylish, we're going to be leaning on the run, but we're still going to want to throw the ball. Denegal might be the better option, whereas we're not going to use him in the run game. But we do think, you know, if we get, if we go with the J.J. McCarthy plan of third and J.J. bail us out after we get three yards on the first two plays, Denegal might be the better option for him. So – that's the other one. But Jaden Davis, I think, is the QB of the future. I do not think it would be fair to Jaden Davis to have a true freshman come in and have him starting for the defending net, you know, national champions. I think that would just be a bad spot. So I, I think it's Denegal or Orgy, but I don't think we should rule out the possibility of a transfer this spring. I don't think you're going to ask him to do too much, no matter who it is. I mean, they didn't ask J.J. McCarthy to do a whole lot. I'm saying, like, attempts-wise, volume. You know, it's going to be between 18 and 25 attempts mostly. And then every once in a while, maybe if there's an opportunity to air it out, you might go 30. The thing I'm I'm, I'm kind of more interested in on the defense because I don't I, I think they're going to run the ball. I think they're going to be exactly who they were on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be a different quarterback and there'll be some growing pains. But like it's not a quarterback dependent system. And Donovan Edwards is going to get a lot of work. But with Martindale coming in as the defensive coordinator, more blitzing, more man coverage. You know, that opens up your vulnerability when they play USC, when they play Texas. You know, if you don't get home or if you aren't running stride for stride and you don't cover, that's a lot of yards after the catch. That's a lot of big plays. So are they forced to become something they haven't had to be playing from behind? You know, all of a sudden you look up, you're 10 points down because you gave up a couple big plays. Like that to me is the more interesting dynamic that could find Michigan a little bit more vulnerable than this past season because they're playing you know we've joked about it before about the big 10 defenses how they do against these new well, they're not only getting usc from out of the conference they're getting you know, the texas who's got so many fireworks so i'm i'm really curious to see how michigan's defense stacks up where it's been dominant the last couple of years i don't know if they can be as effective in the run game with all the turnover on the offensive line I mean, there's some program development there you got to trust right well, that's what i'm kind of going yeah, yeah, so it's like, trust like, what they've done well, i would I would counter that by saying they dealt with a lot of injuries on the offensive line last year, and they were still able to run the ball down Alabama and Washington's oh, yeah. playoff games. So, I mean, again, it's a you, mindset. You, you look at, again, going back, you look at their run game and how they do things and just the variety of ways that they, it's like their zone sometimes, their man, there's inside, there's out. They, they do a whole, they look like the San Francisco 49ers in the run game. In the past game, they look like, 1995 Michigan but in the run game they look like you know an NFL offense it's incredible what they do I, I agree with with the idea like they that they do a lot but they there's also another name I forgot to read off Trinte Jones is also gone so I mean you're talking like your top six offensive linemen or maybe top seven are gone from that team like they had I remember going back to the summer school series um, with, with Sam Webb and he was saying like they basically have seven guys who they feel like can play and I, I do think that they have a lot of what like nice young talent on the roster but that that will matter to me also it's going to matter like I think Roman Wilson was a pretty decent college player right mm -hmm. Cornelius was, was was pretty good as well and like if if you guys think JJ McCarthy is worthy of a first round pick we, we have to sort of count for that in the model like if you lose a first round pick at quarterback and you lose two receivers is is Wilson going to get drafted I assume so yes right? mm -hmm. so I mean Two NFL picks at receiver, top six or seven offensive linemen, and a first-round quarterback. 
that's why I think you need to go with a QB whose legs are really, really a factor because it kind of gives you that plus one in the run game. That is that going to work against like Ohio State or Texas? Maybe not. But I do think that going with heavy QB run game with a guy as athletic as Orgy is, if you can get him to make some kind of leap as a passer, ensures like, like a nice floor for you. Like you're not going to go six and six doing that. You're not going to go seven and five doing that. Not not with that defense. What's What's Michigan's non-con again? They, I know you said they've got what Texas, Texas. but who else are they? All right, I was going to say Texas so they can't. And... They can't do the Jim Harbaugh plan where they go with both like yeah. Orgy and Denegal in the non-con because you've got too big of a game. So I was going to say if they had like a non-con this year, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the path they took. Like both guys would play in the non-con, and we just figure it out from there. I think you'll see they multiple open, quarterbacks. I think you'll see no matter what. I think against Texas, you might see multiple quarterbacks. I just don't know if they're going to know. And they haven't been afraid to play two before. And if they're both kind of running, you kind of play them both. Yeah. And see who kind of emerges. 